if this life really is an opportunity to learn and grow and, and choose to follow Jesus Christ, what I want, and I think what, what each of us should want as we're striving to follow Christ is to hear God's voice and to submit to it. And the, the second part of the book, I kind of break humility into three parts. The first is our willing submission to God's will. The second is willing submission to truth, to the truth instead of our truth. And the last part is submissively serving other people. All right. Hey, everybody. Saints Unscripted here again. Um, this is Caitlin. I'm here with our friend Ben. We are super excited today. I'm, I'm pumped because we're going to talk a little bit about this book that Ben has written. And he is currently a law student at Cambridge. And so we're just going to kind of dive on in about um, some things he's learned about humility and, and how he came to write this book. So um, let's go ahead and start off just getting to know you, Ben, a little bit. Just give us like a brief, you know, description on, on just help us get to know you a little bit. Sure. Um, I grew up in Linden, Utah and went to Pleasant Grove High School. And after that, I served a mission in Ventura, California, uh, speaking Spanish, loved it. Nice. And then I uh, went to, did my undergrad at BYU. I studied linguistics and did a minor in philosophy. Um, and then I worked for a year at BYU Law School doing research and then came here to Cambridge, Massachusetts to go to Harvard Law School. Um, and I'm just finishing up now. And during the last like two years, I've been writing this book about pride and humility and uh, excited for people to hopefully read it and to, to talk to you about it. Um, first of all, that's awesome that you got into Harvard Law. That's incredible. Um, I bet, you know, being surrounded by people that, you know, people that go to Harvard Law, really intelligent people as you are yourself. I think it's interesting that you have, have thought about kind of humility because you're probably around a lot of people that are like, yeah, like I got into Harvard Law, you know? Yeah. So what kind of compelled you in, in the beginning to like, how did this kind of whole thing start? Yeah, I, I certainly didn't plan it. I, I was finishing up my first year and doing exams and just really stressed and felt kind of disconnected from God. I, I just felt like I was putting all my time and focus and energy into law school and trying to, you know, climb this, this worldly success ladder. And I took some time after I studied all day for an exam to read in the Bible. And I read the verse that's in Matthew, I think it's chapter 26, that says, you know, Jesus looks to all of his apostles and says, one of you shall betray me, and all the apostles say, Lord, is it I? Uh, and something about that just really struck me. And I, I spent, I don't know, five or six hours from like 11 at night till deep into the morning, just like thinking about that verse and thinking about whatever it is that, that allowed the apostles to ask that question, to first look at themselves instead of accusing someone else. I knew I didn't have that. And I, I realized that that's got to be humility. And um, I thought, I don't really know what humility means. I know that these apostles seem to have it. I know that Jesus has it and uh, that I probably don't. And so I, I just kind of became obsessed with this idea of what, what does humility mean and how can I uh, try to develop it while also uh, pursuing this degree that's really competitive and that just kind of forces me to spend most of my time studying. And, and yeah, so that's that's kind of how it how it got started. And after that day, I, I was just pretty much obsessed with what does humility mean until the book finished. Some, something about, I, I, hopefully it was the spirit, I guess. Sometimes it's hard to know exactly what is the spirit and what isn't, but something just like really was pushing me to, to try to answer that question. I love that you talked about kind of the, the disciples and how they first looked to themselves. When I was reading your book, that really struck me as well, because I know that sometimes we tend to look at our external things. Like we tend to look externally first instead of inward at ourselves. So I really loved that. And, you know, you decided yeah. to learn more about humility. And I guess if, if you're going on your journey about learning about humility and or just whatever it is, you're kind of on a self journey. What also compelled mm -hmm. you to write it into a, a book? Like you were finding some incredible things, yeah. you wanted to share it. Yeah, I, I guess I didn't realize it was a book until about halfway through. I, I was just genuinely struggling with, with these questions. Um, 
mostly what is humility and what is pride and how, how do you develop it? And I just think through writing, that's just reading and writing helps me sort out my thoughts and helps me grapple with counter arguments and, and, you know, put things together. And so I just, I knew that if I could, if I could write it out clearly, I could understand it. And then I, uh, shared a part of what I'd written about a 20 page little essay that actually turned into the uh, epilogue with my grandparents and my parents and a couple of friends just to see what they thought. Like, am I, am I onto something here? And um, I got really positive feedback from them, which I was a bit surprised by and kind of was encouraged to like con continue to pursue this and continue to uh, write it. And then I, I loved everything about the writing process until like the last six months where it wasn't like trying to understand ideas and reading the scriptures and, you know, creative writing, all the fun stuff. It was just like looking back at everything I'd written and be like, this is bad. How do I edit? How do I make it good? That, that part was miserable, but it, it, I think it was hopefully worth it. Hopefully it'll, it'll, um, be useful to, to some people. Definitely. And I totally get that as, as a, someone who studied public relations and mostly writing big papers and the editing process is definitely the least fun. But I love that one thing that you talk about is just like submitting your will to God. And I think yeah. that's interesting because these days there's kind of this idea that we need to just look at our own beliefs. And it's like, if you follow a God or follow a religion, it's almost like you're doing so mindlessly. Um, mm. And sometimes that can put a negative light on religion. And what, what would be your response to a sentiment like that? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I mean, I, I start from the, the premise that I believe that heavenly father actually exists and that Jesus Christ actually is his son and that the Holy ghost can, can guide us and, and that we can, commune directly from God. I've, I've had experiences in my life that make it so that I don't think I could in good conscience uh, deny that. And so if that's true, I'm, I'm not super interested in what I think is true or what my will is. Cause I, you know, I, I could tell you the things that I like to do or, or what, what's fun for me. Uh, if this life really is an opportunity to learn and grow and, and choose to follow Jesus Christ, what I want, and I think what each of us should want as we're striving to follow Christ is to hear God's voice and to submit to it. And the, the second part of the book, I kind of break humility into three parts. The first is our willing submission to God's will. The second is willing submission to truth, to the truth instead of our truth. And the last part is submissively serving other people. The second one of, of willing submission to truth, I think has been really interesting to me to try to take a step back and, and uh, think hard about, well, just, just because I think this thing is true or, or I have my opinions about this doesn't mean that um, that is the truth and that other people are wrong and that, um, yeah, so I, it, it's just been really um, helpful for me to try to think really hard about, let's just try to understand what the spirit would have me know about what's true in this, in this area. Yeah. And I think that's huge because all of our experiences are just so, so different. We see things in a completely different way. So I really love that you highlighted truth because a lot of people, many of us say these days, like, this is my truth. This is what I believe to be true based on my own experiences. Um, and like you highlighted, yeah. we're, we're putting our trust in, in a God who we truly believe is real and he sees so much more than we ever could he has all of the perspective and so i think that's really i mean i know that you you were looking to learn more about humility but it seems like you really came from a humble place to begin with you know you're searching the scriptures um i think you had a lot more humility in yourself than you think you did so just i i think that's incredible that I, you I don't know about that i mean yeah, it's it's easy to hopefully I, I didn't consciously do this, but it's it's I don't know. I had so much time to reflect and write down the stuff that I thought was worth other people looking at. So that's what you'll get in the book. You don't you don't necessarily get all my stumblings the the whole time, and and I probably don't capture my own pride as as well as I as well as I might have. So I I don't know if that's true, but yeah. thank you. I guess. Well, we've all got a little bit of it, so. 
Um, yeah. One one thing I wanted to ask you about was at the beginning you talk about kind of this this like dream you had, and then how there were some some people that you were either thinking about or they really existed that kind of helped you through this. Was this like a, did you have like a dream and, and talk to these people? Was that something that really happened and influenced your Yeah. Own? So it's interesting because you, you mentioned you've been reading it, but you haven't quite had the, the time to finish it. Right. Mm-hmm. So some of the pushback I've gotten is like, well, we, we weren't sure which part was tr- like fiction and which part was nonfiction until we got to the very end. And then hopefully everything kind of sorts out that w- I guess I'll just spoil it now. That wasn't a real dream. A, a lot of the, a lot of the book is fiction. It's stuff that I went back and, and I thought, well, nobody's going to want to read a book just about like gospel doctrine written by a 26 year old who doesn't know anything. So maybe I can put it into a, into this, you know, story, this narrative that will be a little more interesting to read, but all the, all the fictional detours have meaning. Like the, the dream is supposed to capture, like we've, we've all got people beyond the veil who are cheering for us, who are, uh, I think praying for us and, and doing whatever they can to, to pull us closer to Christ. And, and the dream that you mentioned is yet yeah, ancestors and even, um, future children kind of rooting for me and pushing me away from my pride towards, towards humility. Okay, that's seriously amazing. And that's on me for not finishing it yet. Um, so, but I love, um, I think it's important to tell a story like you did um, because we need something to, what's the word? It, it helps to have some kind of experience or story in order to illustrate that. So we are finding mm-hmm. it in the book, you know, you're gonna go through um, some experiences you had, whether they're true or not, they still, tell a story. It's like in the Bible, you know, in the New Testament and the Old Testament, especially the Old Testament, sometimes we read stories and we're like, I don't know if that's like, if that really happened, but what can we take from it? Which is what's most important. So you said that there was a reason that you needed to write this book and you didn't want to focus on anything until you finished it. Um, The Mm -hmm. author Brandon Sanderson uh, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's written many popular books about, you know, fantasy mm-hmm. and stuff like that. My husband really enjoys his books. But he said that there's a lot of emotions that come with finishing a book. How has this been for you personally? I mean, I imagine especially writing about a topic that's about Christ and and spiritual topics would feel even more that way. How has that been for you in completing it? It's been really strange. It, um the editing process part of what was so hard was just editing is boring and annoying but but part of it was okay this is actually turning into a book now i've got 200 pages of stuff that i've written about humility what right do i have to put out to the world my views on humility when i don't think i'm a humble person and so there was a lot of um soul searching and a lot of praying and a lot of am i doing this just to make myself look good and like, Hey, I wrote a book, like I'm smart or whatever. Um, that part was really hard, but I think going through that and, and kind of coming to the point of like, no, I, even if there is like some pride that's going into this and wanting people to read my, my words and stuff for some selfish purposes, I think this is something that God wants me to do. And then just being content with like, okay, whatever happens with this, like his will be done. And if people hate it, that's okay and like whatever because i've i did my part i did my best and then it's been really cool to uh not like tons and tons of people have read it but to get messages from people who have said this really helped me you know this i felt the spirit when i haven't felt the spirit in a while or you helped me see things in a different way that helped me get over this faith hurdle or whatever even if it's just i always said if it, if one person um gets one step closer to Christ based on something that I have written, the the whole thing will have been worth it. So that part's been really great. And at this point, it's all just like, uh, if if one more person reads it and and gets closer to Christ, that's just awesome. So it's been lots of ups and downs, but but overall really, really cool. And there are ways that you can be an instrument in God's hands. Even if, you know, if you're not sure, like if there's a little bit of pride in there, you know, like you're helping people. And 
for you personally, have has this changed your relationship with God on a new level? How has that been for your spiritual journey? I think it really has. It's just made the way that I approach my faith. It's, it's hard to put into words. I feel like I'm less confident that I know all the details of everything, but I'm more secure in that what I know is enough. And And it's also been really, really helpful in my relationships with other people because the whole third part of the book, which I think it's actually the best chunk of the book, um, is about what humility looks like in our relationships with other people and how following the example of Christ and that he responded to pain with mercy and, and love towards others. And he was willing to get hurt in order to, you know, bless other people's lives. The small ways that we can follow in, in his footsteps really bring us so much closer to Christ and, and can heal our relationships in really powerful ways. So, and again, I, I don't exemplify any of that well at all, but just seeing who I want to be in my relationships with others that I want to be the kind of person that suffers with those that are suffering and, and loves those that, that need love and all that has really, uh, yeah, it, it's just made my relationships with others better. And it's made me know much more clearly who I want to be, who I'm striving to be. And there's something really beautiful about like understanding the gap of who you are and who you want to be, but knowing that you're walking in the right direction. I love that so much. It's like in the recent general conference, what was Elder Ketcher talked about, like faith being like a ladder and Mm -hmm. you can go forward or backward, but there's definitely a direction you can go and God will never like abandon you. He'll always be there to make up for the gap. So I absolutely love that. And is there anything else, like any other parting words of, of advice when it comes to humility and or just any other things you'd like to share with our audience? Sure. I, I don't know about, about advice, but um, one of the principles I think is really powerful is comparing the way Jesus responded to unfairness and, and pain with how Satan and Cain respond to just like being pulled down to negative things. So, you know, Jesus is being nailed to the cross and he prays and says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Like what, what a powerful message. And, and God says to Cain, Cain, you're on a bad track here. Maybe, you know, course correct, because this isn't looking good for you. And, and so Cain feels kind of pulled down by that. And his response is to kill his brother and to, you know, cement his, his footing. Like I'm following Satan. I'm not following God. I, I think learning to look at those two types of responses to pain and to, Uh, unfairness in life has been really useful to me. I have learned to see in myself that often I feel the pull to to respond in the way that Cain did as opposed to the way that Jesus did. Like when when other people put me down, my instinct is to push them down. Uh, Or when other people are bragging, my instinct is to, I'm going to lift myself up, I'm going to brag even more. But I, and I think that's a a very tiny version of of kind of what I call the Cain instinct. And but I think it's so powerful to just see that in, in ourselves and to try to respond in the way that the Savior would. When other people are rude to us, when other people push put us down, um, not to respond in kind, but to, to turn the other cheek, to um, find a way to respond with love, even though that's not fair. That's not. But but I think the, the path of following Christ isn't an eye for an eye. It's responding with mercy and with love. Um, even though I don't think that comes naturally to any of us, but it's a really beautiful thing. It's a really important ideal to strive for. Yeah, it doesn't come easy to us, but definitely something we can strive for. I love that. And this is something that is so prevalent today and just like with social media and the kind of the sharing of ideas and different political and social philosophies, there's so much that we can learn from our Savior in willing to just look outside of ourselves a little more and apply these principles. So I am really excited to finish the book. So where can our audience find it? Uh, Just on Amazon. It's called Pride and Paradox by Benjamin T. Lee. If you just Google that or search that on Amazon. But yeah, yeah, it's out. Thank you so much, Ben, for joining us today. Again, the, the book is called Pride and Paradox. And 
yeah, that's a great place to, to learn a little bit more about how we can all, which all of us can definitely work on that humility. So thank you so much, guys. We will let you go. Thanks, if you, let us know in the comments if you have any questions for Ben. And as always, go ahead and like, subscribe, turn on that notification button, and we will see you next time.